for the last year, it's been a year that's really been dominated throughout by COVID. And we've really had a year of two halves. In the first half, we saw that some of our customers were actually closed and our volumes fell. Our volumes were down by 1% in the first half. And for a manufacturing uh, company, that, that, that's quite an issue, particularly when we kept hold of all of our staff. We, we invested in keeping all of our teams together. We have a, a very highly trained and skilled workforce. And so we had a lot of cost there in carrying those teams, plus all the protection we had to put in to keep all of our factories operational. But then in the second half, we started to see the growth in e-commerce. As you know, we're a purely fiber-based business. All of our product can be recycled. We recycle it. And we saw you know, a really strong return to growth. In fact, our, our volumes in the second half were up over 8%. So we saw you know, a, a difficult first half with the investment we put in, but the second half, strong volumes, strong return to profitability. And actually, that's continued into the new year as well. So very much a story of two halves there. Yeah, clearly the share price has responded to the better performance in the second half of the year here. But it does seem that there's also a bit of interest in the M&A story. Just give us a line on the Mondi approach and how you now feel about the M&A outlook. Uh, is it necessary for you to build defences? As at Deer Smith, we think we've got a really vibrant future. I mean, look at those volumes that we're producing, our gaining market share, a fully fibre-based business, absolutely the intersection of e-commerce, sustainability with our digital platforms. We have been investing heavily in our business. We're going to continue growing and developing ourselves. And that's what I can really talk about. What other companies are doing or thinking, I really don't know. What I do know is our customers like what we're doing and they're rewarding us with increasing market share and increasing volumes. And that's what we're focused on, on really getting about and servicing our customers into the future. And Miles, I want to ask you about some of the pricing pressure that you flagged up. You've mentioned old corrugated cases. That's where there's been some inflationary cost pressures, but also across to energy and transport. And when we keep talking about the driver shortage out there, what do you think is going to be transitory on the pricing front from what you can see at this point? I mean, clearly, as the, as the European and the US economies are, are getting back towards, and not at, but towards where they were uh, pre-COVID, there are a lot of sort of structural, which are just inefficiencies in everybody coming back. And we have seen an increase in, in a number of input uh, costs. Now, what we have to do, we have to do our best to offset that in reformulating and looking for new sources. But that's clearly is feeding through into some, uh, into some inflation. And with the level of demand that we've got you know, over the next year, I think we should be expecting to see uh, higher prices for our product. And we're also expecting to see some, some input inflation as well. What happens after that? We're just going to have to wait. Uh, we're just going to have to wait and see. I think that's more of sort of a macro macro uh, issue for governments and uh, you know central banks, etc.